There is a place that sometimes appears in dreams on hot, sweltering days. Yeah, we can see the ice caps getting smaller, smaller. Knowing when the Greenland ice sheet was present and when it was gone there are absolutely critical questions as we look out in the next couple hundred years to what's going to be probably the most massive change that we've ever seen as a species. Paradoxically, our ability to look forward in time is best aided by looking backwards in time. We are looking back in time. We could, for instance, see what kind of cycles there are. This starts back in the Cold War, believe it or not, with the collection of the very first ice core that was drilled all the way through the entire thickness of the ice sheet of Greenland. And they recovered about three and a half meters of frozen sediment. These sediments were forgotten about. When we opened these boxes, it was just like finding, you know, gold or something better than gold. I said, I think there's fossil plants in here. Boom, there's a twig. I couldn't believe it. Every single sample has plants in it, which was surprising. And then we look at these and we're like, oh my God, there's bugs in it. The only way you're going to get light on those sediments underneath almost a mile of ice is if the ice is gone. Just what was the threshold that caused that part of Greenland to not have ice on it anymore? If you can have much lower CO2 and melt the Greenland ice sheet, what will happen if we have very high CO2? How long will it take to get how much smaller? and how much sea level rise over the next century. The sea level rise could be more than five meters. Had that core been taken apart and used up in the 1960s, we'd never know what we know now. Because the analyses that every one of us on this team does didn't exist. That archive of sediment holds precious clues about the rhythm of the ice sheet its patterns of ice retreat and advance, the memory of darkness, light, and ice. <laughs> <laughs>